Thank you, Lou. What's up, guys? Did y'all enjoy that fight? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm glad. We expect you to go a full 12 rounds? You know, I mean, being in with Sean before, you know, his amateur background, my amateur background, you know, we thought that with the eight ounce gloves, we were able to do damage. We were able to do damage. Um, for whatever reason, man, I'm not going to say this or that, but for whatever reason, we weren't able to uh, close it out. Um, maybe I was a little too timid. Um, it just is what it is. I still fought a great fight. Um, I went in and did exactly what I thought was going to win the fight, which is defense. Defense, defense, defense. Pick your shots and be effective. Short uppercuts on the inside. A new Sean, you know, he likes to use his head movement. He likes to be in your chest. And um, I was going to capitalize on pretty much his strength. I was, and I was going to let him try to bull rush me all night. Thank you. It's great, man. Um, this is what we wanted, man. This is what we live for. You know, Keith one time, Thurman, is the champion of the world, and I'm a true fighter, man. I was bred for this sport, you know, since the age of seven, now 27. I told you guys, I got to, oh, I'm not afraid to let it go. If you can beat me, beat me. You know what I mean? Sean Porter put on a great effort and a great performance, but he was not able to walk away with that W. I've showed you time in and time out against Diego Chavez. I showed you when Carras rocked me. I showed you when Luis Colazzo hit me with a body shot. I showed you guys um, when Robert Guerrero gave me a hematoma in third round and I had to go nine rounds. This is the first time that I've been cut in my professional career. Um, and we just kept pushing, man. He was trying to fight and smother me. And, um, you know, I threw back, man. We, it was a great fight. Keith, over here. Keith, straight. Where, where? Right First of all, where oh, are you cut up? exactly? Oh, yeah, it's hard to see, right? It Doctor is. did a great job. Where, where are yeah. you cut? <laughs> so it's literally in, like, in the eyebrow. The it was eye. very thin. He said that it actually might even not show any scarring. Um, um, he was patting himself on the back on how great of a job he did. Um, I'm sure you were happy to hear that, too, though. <laughs> I, I was, you know. Um, he says stay out of the sun. The sun can cause, you know, scar tissue and things of that being from Florida, you know. Um, so he told me everything that we need to do. He said the stitches need to remain in for six days. I'm on a 60-day suspension, and um, it is what it is. Congratulations on your victory. And I, I know there was a lot of discussion leading up to this fight that you and uh, Sean were friends outside the ring. You're, you know, Dan Birmingham and your and, uh, and Sean's father been friendly for many years. Uh, I want to know, after the fight was over, did you and Sean and or uh, Ken Porter share any words about, you know, the, the having been friends and finally getting over with and fighting a great fight? Um, there wasn't a whole lot of time um, to talk. I did go over there, you know, and try to uh, pat him on the back, tell him, you know, uh, great fight, great challenge, man. Um, you know, we, we didn't really say much. We didn't say much. Um, I told you guys before, you know, I got love and respect for Team Porter. I still do. Nothing has really changed. Um, you know, this is, this is what it was advertised to be. Two young, strong American fighters, welterweight champions going toe-to-toe -to -toe in their prime. And that's what you guys saw today. I'd like to ask Dan also that question. Uh, Dan Birmingham. If, uh, if you and uh, Ken Porter had any words after the fight? Oh, no, we've been friends for years. Uh, I, I brought him to the gym two years ago to box with Keith. They boxed every other day for six weeks. We've been friends ever since. It's a business. It's a business. We're here to do a job. We did our job, and we shake hands. That's all. Thank you. Hi. Keith, uh, how many stitches, by the way, do you know? I don't know. No. Nah. Secondly, I know you said that you want to fill um, filling Mayweather's shoes. You know, one, the one big criticism on Mayweather is always that, you know, he's in boring fights, and you were just in a terrific fight. Um, you're the number one welterweight in the world in most rankings. Um, how, 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 what, do you think, what else do you think you have to do to fill his shoes, but, and how big was tonight toward doing that? You know, you got to ride the train, man. It's Mayweather, you know, didn't become Mayweather overnight. Um, I believe a, a major change in Mayweather's career was when he beat Oscar De La Hoya, and then, you know, he 
continuously got great fights after that. You know, it, it was never one fight that made Mayweather. It's not going to be one fight that makes Keith Thurman. It's a, the continuation of fighting at this level, at this pedigree, and coming out on top. Uh, Keith here in the middle. Uh, first of all, did you feel like uh, when he had his head in your chest early, especially when he was trying to come forward, that your counter left was, uh, was your most effective punch uh, throughout the middle rounds? Um, the counter left, I was trying to sneak in that little left uppercut. You know, um, I, I saw it. I think I uh, could have thrown it more. I, Dan was asking me to go to the body. Sean's short, stocky frame and how low he gets made it a little difficult to get into the body. There's several things that I would have liked to do and executed, and I think I, we could have done more damage, but we were able to do enough damage in each and every single round. And one last follow-up. Uh, the ninth, ninth round was obviously a wild toe-to-toe -to -toe round, but in the 10th, did you think you might have him for a second when you staggered him with a right there? There were um, several times where I thought that I almost had him. Um, but like I said earlier, for whatever reason, it was a little difficult to follow up tonight. Um, maybe it was the year layoff. Maybe it was the car accident. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to pinpoint anything exactly. You know, the fight is what it was. It was a great fight, and I'm happy to still be champion of the world. Keith, did you, did you feel in those early rounds that the fight was getting away from you? Was there some fear that, you know, this was slipping away? Nah. Um, I felt like I opened up with a, a nice round one. I felt like I consciously gave him round two. Um, I want on to go out for round three. Um, I knew I was making a competitive fight. It was probably about going into um, the ninth, a little bit into the tenth, you know, consciously. Even Danny said, win every round from here, you know. Um, I stayed, I tried to stay on the outside a little bit more. Sean's pressure was less at that point in the fight. And um, we just boxed smart, man. I, I told you, man, boxing smart was going to be the key to victory for this fight. And there's obviously going to be a, a lot of calls for a rematch. Is that something you want to get to sooner or later? Um, it's interesting, man, because, you know, I tried, you know, everyone's talking about what's next, what's next, what's next. Obviously, we got to sit down. We got to talk to Al. Um, outside of that, you know, um, there's definitely potential for a possible rematch. Um, I got to look over this WBA issued mandatory that was talked about way prior, you know, um, so we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, but you know, the fans want it, man. The fans will most likely get it. Congratulations on a very tough fight. He was connecting throughout the fight with a lot of body shots. Did some of those shots seem to stymie you a little bit? No. Um, there was just a few times he was able to slip under the jab and throw that little, it's not even like a full hook, it's almost like a half hook, stiff jab into the solar plex, but um, there really wasn't, there wasn't the power behind it um, to be as effective, but it, it did help him get on the inside and throw more punches. And because you were familiar with him from history with him, did this fight seem to be as challenging that it turned out to be? in your mind when you went into this fight after it was over? We expected this from Team Porter. You know, he likes to get low. He likes to use his leg strength. You know, like I said, defense was going to be key. There were times where rabbit punches were being thrown. You know, I've said this time in and time out. You know, I analyzed my opponents. The one thing that Sean does is he brings it, but he brings it in a fashion that is not fully effective. If you want to take the title, you need to be more effective. Proper angles, popping the head back, more clean shots, not just smothering and trying to outwork. Got to land effective blows. When he was throwing, 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 the little punches on the inside were clipping them on the chin, you know, clipping them here, clipping them there, and um, it was it was clear, man. The at this stage, at this stage, and this level, defense 
is key in any sport. To be champion, you must have some of the best defense and some of the best offense. I was at the last Super Bowl. You got to see two of the best teams who had the best defenses in the NFL for that year, for that season. But the one who had the best defense was victorious. You know, so that's just a simple example, you know, coming from the gym of Winky Wright, learn, learning how to protect yourself, you know, um, wanting to establish a little bit of the rope-a-dope, you know, my personal shout out to Muhammad Ali, you know, um, my, Floyd Mayweather's used it. He used it against Marcos Maidana. This fight reminds me a little bit of that fight where the one fighter is really coming in, giving it his all, not really backing down, you know, but I believe that I was able to land the clearer punches and more effective and rocked him several times in the fight. Keith, you were talking about what Sean didn't do effectively. What do you feel he was effective? I mean, pressure, man. You know, he's good at what he's good at. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what I analyze. He's good at what he's good at. And, but the, the pressure is not effective. So his strength is also his weakness if you understand, you know, and, and we had a game plan and we were able to execute it. Were there moments that he hurt you? I know that there was the body shot, for example. Body shots were pff, not effective, man. I mean, Luis Colazzo hit me with, with the hardest body shot that I've had to endure in my professional career, you know. Um, and I don't, I don't even know why his body shots weren't, you know, that um, devastating. But out, outside of that, the most effective punch Sean landed, mm, not sure exactly which round it was. It wasn't in necessarily the early rounds, probably mid fight no later than the seventh round it was a short little fast right hand and um it was a good punch but just like how he took many of my good punches i took his good punch and we just kept it moving forward keith you hit him with some absolute bombs in this fight were you surprised at some point saying to yourself what am i gonna have to hit him with to knock him down or to knock him out a little bit i think like i said man you know really Sitting here now, I can say maybe the layoff played a role. But the, the pressure, I, I'm a power fighter. I throw effective punches even when I'm moving backwards. But the fact that I was moving backwards could have a little bit to do with the fact that it was hard, but it wasn't hard enough. It wasn't sat down. You know, It was effective. It wasn't effective enough. And then for whatever reason... I didn't instantly get in on that follow-up, you know. So I believe that there are several things that I could have done to create that knockout and that KO victory. It didn't happen tonight. Hey, man, if a rematch comes, maybe we'll get it that time. Was there one punch in particular or one round in particular where you thought you hurt him more than any other time that you could remember? There was one punch where I caught him, and instantly he clinched, and I felt the strength of his clinch. So I knew that he was hurt. There was another time where he was at, in his corner, and he was low to the ground. He was stumbling. He looked hurt. You know, it, it is what it is. He weathered the storm. I weathered his storm. It was a great fight tonight. I haven't issued an article on my shoulder for um, a few years. Um, the, the injury was a neck injury and a spinal injury. Um, so luckily, my neck feels great. So um, I'm actually very happy with the rehab that we were able to do with my doctors. Keith, um, you, you, you mentioned to your trainer that he, he asked you that you had to win the last rounds. At what point in the fight did you realize, I'm in the fight of my life. I have to go in overdrive. Probably the last four rounds, you know, um, I really, I knew because I tell you guys this stuff all the time, man. It's seven rounds for victory. Seven rounds for victory. I might have dropped out of high school, but I know how to count. You know what I mean? And math was my favorite subject. So I really analyzed. And, and 
I knew that, you know, the way Sean Porter approaches a fight, he loves to outwork his opponents. And numbers matter in sports. Outputs matter in sports. But in boxing, power matters. Effectiveness matters. And just, you got to know your sport, baby. You got to know your sport. And I believe that is why I am and still champion today. Second question. Um, when you heard tight, unanimous decision, how big of the ball was in the pit of your stomach when you heard that? I was confident because as I heard those results, I did feel good about the final four. I do believe that, you know, we did, we did what it needed to do. Um, I be, you know, there were several times um, that I believe I equalized all the pressure with my effective punching and my power throughout many, many rounds. You, 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 I know you have the WBA mandatory to get out of the way, but you've been saying for a while that you want to unify with Danny Garcia at some point. Do so you think yes, that sir. fight will be even bigger now after this one? In this fight? It'd be great. It'd be great. I mean, you know, Sean Porter having only one loss at the time, you know, Danny Garcia undefeated. I mean, you love this one. You got to love that setup, you know. Um, I mean, it, we're in a new time. We're in a new age. There's a new generation. And your boy one time is right here at the front, ready to go, ready to go. I got to owe. I'm not afraid to let it go. If you can beat me, beat me. It's cool. If you can beat me, beat me. You deserve it. I said at the press conference the other day that the thing you could hope for here was a great fight, someone walking away to say, okay, I'm the guy right now, come and take it from me. And that's what he's saying. And then you got Danny Garcia with the BC belt, he wants to take it from him. You know, you got Spence coming up, you right. got, you got the, you know, the kid in England, Kel Brook, who's going to fight Vargas. You right. got all sorts of talent in this division. And I can tell you, the guy next to me ain't afraid to fight anybody. And there are other people that got the same attitude. And, and like you said, man, it's a good time right now. It's a new generation. Young, hungry fighters, ready to go. You know, I mean, I mean, y'all should be happy, man. Y'all should be excited. I really, truly believe that. How did you feel about fighting on CBS television, on public television? Was that a thrill for you? Honestly, it's a dream come true, you know. Um, I can really just remember the words of Ben Getty. Ben Getty, he was like a broken record, man. I mean, he'll, he'll, his words never die with me. He said, it's not about the promoter. It's not about the manager. It's about the networks. And the beauty is that we have a manager. We have a promoter who understands that philosophy and bringing boxing back to prime time bringing it back to the people we were live on Facebook today there was a comment Keith Thurman versus Danny Garcia pay-per-view I don't want pay-per-view I don't want you to pay for this entertainment there's too much world-class athletic entertainment for free. I want all of America to see me. I want, I didn't have HBO growing up. I didn't have Showtime growing up. And then if you have HBO and you have Showtime and they make it pay-per-view, now you gotta come out your pocket some more. I'm not trying to gouge the American people and the American public. I want to get everybody on my side. I want everybody to have an opportunity and a chance to witness one time. And I want boxing to come back to the forefront of network television. And the this fact that I said that before, believe me, this man wasn't coached. That came out of his mouth and his thoughts. <laughs> Yes, I am, you know, um, you know, but uh, I'm prepared for everything, man. And, and I'll elaborate, right? So why would Keith Thurman cut his hair after losing the fight? 
right? Because obviously, that would mean that there's a time for change. Let it all go. Rewrite yourself. Reinvent yourself. Recreate yourself. Just because I cut my hair don't mean it ain't growing back, baby, you know? <laughs> Uh, th this crowd was particularly energized, and like you were saying, you were fighting on national television. Um, boxing tends to really like rivalries, like, for example, Gotti and uh, Ward. Could you foresee you and Porter perhaps being one of those great boxing rivalries? I actually thought about that um, last time I was sitting with Lou um, at the press conference right before the fight, you know, that this fight really does have that kind of potential, you know, and um, after this kind of performance, I believe it still holds that kind of potential, especially with um, the, the friendship, you know, with the fact that we, we both want this for ourselves, you know, that he put on a great effort, I put on a great effort, you know, they're probably going to watch tape, they're probably going to believe that they can make the adjustments to get the proper victory. There's, like I said, there's things that I could have done to get that knockout. And, um, hey, man, it's a, it's a new day. It's a new time, man. This, this could be a new rivalry. Going into this fight, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley said that Sean Porter was really working hard in training. Yes. And that there was some thought that perhaps you weren't working as hard in training. Yes. Was this the type of fight you were expecting when, when the 12 rounds were over? Did you believe this was the type of fight that, that would have gone as long as it did and would have had the exchanges that this fight had? You know, as long as you can take the punch, baby. You know, that's what's happened. It's going to go round by round by round by round. Um, you know, Dan, all he kept saying is, Sean's going to come in shape. The one thing they're going to do, Sean's going to come in shape. Week by week, Dan said, Sean's going to come in shape. You know, and what happened? He came in shape, you know. Um, that, like I said, man, you know, know, know who you're fighting, know your opponent, and um, make the proper adjustments. Keith, uh, Jason Klinskills for Fox, Sport, Fox Sports and Yarn Barker. Um, you said for, during a recent interview before the fight, um, you likened a boxer's, boxer's career to the stock market. Um, you know, and it could sometimes take one moment where it could all come crashing down, so to speak. Um, after tonight's fight, especially knowing how, how well you know Porter, where would you assess not just yourself on the market, but also Porter? I mean, still, with, with that kind of performance, you're looking at, Tremendous athletes. The, the beauty of Sean Porter, right? I mean, like I say, man, I mean, we can talk boxing all day, bro. This is my life. This is my career. I'm here for a reason, not a short season, baby, all right? Listen to this, man. The beauty of Sean Porter is that when he lost his IBF title, he lost to an undefeated fighter. When he lost tonight, he lost to an undefeated fighter. So... Sean Porter's not number one in the world. Sean Porter's not number two in the world. But Sean Porter is an exciting and great fighter in the welterweight division, and nobody can deny that. So yes, he is still valuable. Yes, you know, he has a marquee. And me being undefeated and still the WBA champion, my stock has risen. What's going on, Keith? Thanks a lot for, uh, for the performance tonight. Um, really, really tremendous performance. Uh, you, and, you and Sean really, really did a lot for the sport tonight on national television. Uh, we talked about that before you arrived. Um, it's kind of funny. He, he actually looks a little bit like Leon Spinks. And, uh, you know, <laughs> felt like you were in there with him. What did, um, what did you feel uh, going into the championship rounds? Uh, obviously, ringside the crowd being what it is, we couldn't hear what was going on. What were you guys talking about as, as the fight drew to those stretches there? And what was your mindset toward trying to gut this victory out? And what do you want to do next? The, the thing about going into those final rounds, I could clearly see Sean relaxing. 
And with that, I was able to relax, you know? And I believe at that relaxed tempo, it was just gonna be a lot easier to outbox them, a lot easier to just really cruise to the victory, you know? Um, it's not exactly what I would have wanted from myself, but I ultimately want victory. And I do preach that, that I'm looking for the knockout, I'm going for the knockout, but if I don't get the knockout, we want victory. And that's what we were able to do tonight. <sighs> you know, I mean, I've, I want Danny Garcia. I want more than one belt. I, Nah, I kind of do want a head and shoulders commercial, though. You know what I'm saying? Your boy, <laughs> your boy will take that. You know what I'm saying? I'll take that one. Um, <laughs> and I still didn't get rid of the Toyota Prius, you know, because it's a great car. But, um, you know, like I said, man, I, I love boxing. You know, I love the way the world works. And, you know... I'm going to talk about this little mandatory, you know. If I have to take this mandatory, I have to take this mandatory. So there are points in time in the fighter's career that one does not get what he wants, you know. But since you asked, in my heart, I want an opportunity to face Danny Swift Garcia. Look, let me put it this way, right? Guerrero, father-son combination, got rid of him. Kenny Porter. Sean Porter, father-son combination, got rid of him, okay? If you're a daddy's boy, come see me, boy, all right? Come on, man. Come on, man. I got this. I got this, okay? All day, every day. So, you know, it's, I look at it in those ways sometimes, man. I find it funny. I find it ironic. Um, you know, it was very interesting. You know, the last time that I fought a right-handed fighter, a true right-handed fighter, was um, who the OD is, man. Who the OD is, okay? So, you know, I mean, you just never know what's really going to happen, you know, and the fact that I'm, I'm the guy taking care of these father-son combinations, they have great relationships, they have great fighters, they're world-class fighters, but, you know, they, they can't be Keith Thurman. Since we're all going to get a headache listening to, uh, to this Gillette commercial in the background, I'm going to let Keith and, uh, and Dan leave. Uh, thank you all for your patience and for being here. And Keith thank, Keith, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to promote this fight and to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Lou.